Okay, so only two forces are acting on object. Uh, mass is three, three kilograms. Find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the object. Okay, so I'll call this F1 equals 40 newtons. F2 equals 60 newtons. And the theta between uh, F1 and F2 equals 45 degrees. First thing to do is maybe draw a free body diagram. So, uh, well, this is fine. This is the positive x direction, positive y direction. I have F1 in this direction, F2, and theta. Why did I put the axis here? Well, I just I know I'm going to have to add these two forces. I want to put one on the axis already, so I had to deal with breaking down this F2. So if I draw another free body diagram, I can take F1 and break it down into F2x and F2y. So what I've basically done here is I can add F1 and F2x. You can even call this F1x if you wanted to. I can add F1x and F2x together and then I have F2y which I can't add F2y and the, this stuff together but uh, at least in the conventional sense but what I can do is take the, um, well, I guess I'll, I can create what I call FR using F2Y and F1X plus F2X. See, these two components can add together, and then I've got this y component up here, and I can use Pythagorean's theorem to find the resultant vector. So let's just do it uh, slowly, going through it all. Um, we can say F1x equals F1 because it's, it's basically saying F1 cosine of theta, but the angle that F1 makes with the positive x-axis is, is zero, so cosine of zero, uh, we we'll call this cosine of theta one, I guess, so that would be zero. So F1, x is just F1. The other item in the F, uh, in the x direction, is F2, x, which is just the same as saying F2 cosine theta. And I guess I'll call this theta two because I threw out another, another theta. Okay, so th those are the two things in the x direction. Is the sum of that is always going to equal mass times acceleration. Now the acceleration could be zero or could not be zero. In this case, it is not zero because uh, these are the only two forces acting on the object. So there is a net force and we're finding the acceleration caused by that net force. In the y direction, F1 y equals F1 sine of theta one, and that's zero, so theta one is zero, so sine of uh, zero is zero, so F1 y equals zero. F2 y is F2 sine of theta two, and if you have to prove this to yourself, just think this is F2 theta two, F2 x, F2 y, so sine of theta two equals opposite F2 y over a hypotenuse F2. So F2 y equals F2 sine theta two. And that also does not equal zero because there is an acceleration here. So my next job is to sum up everything. The sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to F1x plus F2x. 
which is equal to f1 because f1x equals f1 plus f2 cosine theta 2. And of course, that equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. So the acceleration in the x direction is just f1 plus f2 cosine theta 2 over n. If I go over to the y side, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals f1y plus f2y, which is equal 0 plus f2 sine theta 2. And of course that equals mAy. So the acceleration in the y direction equals f2 sine theta 2 over m. So now I have two accelerations. Remember, acceleration and force are really, the only difference is the scale factor m. So I have a x, a y, and I want to find the total acceleration, which is going to be some a at angle, let's call this phi, because it's a new angle. Well, I know that the magnitude, remember acceleration is a vector, the magnitude is equal to ax squared plus ay squared, because this is just a right triangle. So the leg of this squared plus the leg of that squared, uh, because plus this leg of the triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. So a equals the square root of f1 plus f2 cosine theta 2 over m squared plus uh, f2 sine theta 2 over m squared. And you can put the numbers in there. I, I, but what is the direction? What is phi? Well, to do that, I'll have to take the tangent of phi, which equals the opposite ay over adjacent ax. Now, the inverse tangent of tangent of phi is going to equal the inverse tangent of ay over ax. The inverse tangent of the tangent, it undoes the tangent that's happening on phi here. So that just equals inverse tangent ay over ax. Or if you want to simplify it a little bit, ay is f2 sine theta 2 over m over f1 plus f2 sine uh, cosine theta 2 over m. So phi just equals inverse, oops, I'm off the screen, inverse tangent of f2 sine theta 2 over f1 plus f2 cosine theta 2. I'll let you put the numbers in. Okay.